Hello and welcome to another episode of the In-Depth series. Mauna Loa has woken up from its almost 40 year long slumber and it is the largest volcano on the planet. As it is the largest active volcano on the planet, it is very important for us to understand how and why does it erupt. The tourists have gathered to take selfies with Mauna Loa and that is why we are very interested in this news. Of course, we have to understand it from the perspective of films as well as GS means paper first. So Mauna Loa, let us talk about what has happened. Mauna Loa has erupted. It is the largest active volcano in the world. So please remember it is the largest active volcano in the world. Moving ahead, if we talk about what does the word Mauna Loa mean. In Hawaii, Mauna Loa is known, is named so as it is known as the long mountain. We also have to remember that it is a shield volcano. We will talk about that. So what has happened that the US National Park Service said the first eruption at the volcano's top caldera, that is of course the top caldera this region, has erupted since 1984, which of course the caldera, as I told you, almost 40 years are there. It started on Sunday at about 11.30 pm. And since then, the last Sunday, since then, continuous minor eruptions are being registered. Now, what are shield volcanoes? There are different types of volcanoes. First is the cinder cone, composite volcano, it has many vents, right? Then we have shield volcanoes. Here, shield volcanoes are much wider than they are taller. That means they are not very tall, but they are very wide and they have high volume. If we talk about Mauna Loa, then its base is as wide as 160 kilometers. Now, if we talk about Mauna Loa, the kind of magma that has erupted is hotter, drier and it is more fluid in nature, but hazards are not too much. If we talk about the Pacific Ring of Fire, we know that there are many plates that make up the Pacific Ring of Fire. Also, Mount Kilauea and Mauna Loa make up volcanoes in the Pacific Plate. It is in the Pacific Plate. There are many major and minor plates. Many include many volcanoes and uh, of course earthquakes and seismicity are registered in the Ring of Fire region. So you see that major plates and minor plates when two plates, two tectonic plates either they are moving away from each other or they are moving towards each other creates such subduction that magma rises. But here there is a little difference in the Pacific plate. We will talk about that. So you can see so many uh, volcanoes are there in South America, North America, specifically if we talk about the Java Trench near that. Many important plates are there and Pacific Ring of Fire is there. And these are the major active volcanoes if we talk about St. Rainier, uh, St. Helens, Mount Rainier, Cotopaxi, Misti, Azufral, Osonor, Osorno. Then we also have Mount Peli and of course uh, here at the Cocos Plate we have Izalco, Poas and Central American region. So you see that because of the movement of the plates we see volcanism. Now let's talk about the big island of Hawaii where Mauna Loa is situated. The big island of Hawaii is made up of five volcanoes including Mauna Loa and these all make up the big island of Hawaii. Second one also is Mauna Kea, it is the world's tallest mountain. As if we compare the uh, two, it is much more taller than Mauna Loa and if we uh, have to measure the height of it from its very base, 20,000 feet below the ocean surface is situated of Mauna Kea. Let's move ahead and talk about more of it, the big island of the US, state of Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii belongs to US. It is covered by Mauna Loa because it is very wide in nature. It is situated inside the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park and the volcano has an area larger than 5,179 square kilometer. It reaches 13,679 feet above the sea level. Mauna Loa is the largest and accounts for nearly half of the island's land area and since times as the US has registered now, since 1843 34 eruptions have been recorded and the most popular settlement of the island 
is the Hilo Island, which is just few miles away from the Mauna Loa. Moving ahead, great. Moving ahead, now let's talk about the reasons by which magma surfaces at Mauna Loa. As we see the structure of the earth, internal structure of the earth, this is the weak area of asthenosphere where most of the movement takes place and as it is a weak area, we have known that magma comes from a region not exactly originating, if not originates, then of course it has certain uh, part in, uh, you can say forming a chamber for magma. So a series of magma chambers, it is found in Mauna Loa between 2 to 40 kilometers below the surface. And these magma chambers, as we can see from here, these magma chambers are basically not temporary, but uh, not permanent, sorry, but temporary in nature. Okay. So these magma chambers are only temporary and they have lava or magma as well as gases. Okay. And as we know that this particular region is very active from the mantle to the whenever volcanism has to take place, we will talk with the help of uh, this internal structure only and we will take mantle to be the one of the most important regions. So you can see that how does everything happen? When magma plume starts moving towards the surface, the motion of the Pacific plate at, as it is moving northwards, the Pacific plate where Mauna Loa is situated is moving northwards and the motion is here only like this. Okay, then you see that Mauna Loa is over here. These are the chambers we can say where magma and gas both are getting stored and when the pressure is so much with the help of gas that it cannot hold, the chamber cannot hold the magma as well as the gas anymore. Eruptions take place, okay? So, remember all, all, all this. Now, here, when the movement of Pacific plate, of the Pacific plate towards the north is happening, volcanoes are progressively becoming older. And you see that right now, in Hawaii, Mauna Loa, Kilauea, these all are younger volcanoes, alright? Moving ahead now, the crust and the mat mantle, that comprise the Pacific plate, they are cracking at different places, which is giving uh, the, yes, I said northward, basically it is north westward, okay, remember like this. So, because the Pacific plate is moving northwestwards or northwards, we can also say northward, but precisely northwestward, what is happening? That magma can also move to, because cracks are happening, so magma also, magma is also you know, getting up to the regions where cracks are happening and coming on the surface. Similarly, like the Halekala on the Maui, which erupted about 250 years ago, now it has gotten older. Moving ahead, now if we talk about how does the molten rock travel from deep in the earth's mantle and what exactly is a mantle plume. Now, mantle as we know, this particular region is not made up of homogeneous rocks. Some rocks are having, they melt at different temperatures. Some might have high melting temperatures, some might have low. Because of the heterogeneous nature of mantle, there is of course a disturbance in the mantle region. Okay, and the partially molten rock, because of this particular difference, becomes very buoyant in nature. And when it becomes buoyant, it ascends or rises up towards the surface and this moving is known as, this movement of magma is known as mantle plume, okay. And as the magma ascends, the overlying rocks, they also were putting pressure, but as the magma is ascending, the pressure becomes lesser and lesser. When that happens, the magma or the different rocks are melting more and more. And when they melt more and more, they collect in the magma chamber and when they collect in the magma chamber, they will find any way where a large crack is there and volcanoes provide vents, okay. And then when enough volcanic gases as well as magma has been collected, it will erupt. Now, there is a, there is one thing that we have to understand what these diagrams show us 
that magma is moving in the straight direction that rarely happens generally magma moves from the south eastward direction and by moving through twists and turns it finds its way all right moving ahead now if we have to talk about why this hawaii typically sees less dramatic eruptions than other location first of all we have to understand that we are talking about a shield volcano shield volcanoes are not uh, very you know they are not very dramatically erupting they do not erupt very dramatically hawaii actually is in the middle of the oceanic plate which is the pacific plate and you see that it is the most it makes the volcanoes which are present on the pacific plate to be the most isolated hot spots on the earth so that is why oceanic magma is a little different than continental magma because it has different chemical composition so it flows more easily and when there is less pressure if something is not being able to move very you know it's uh, supposedly we are talking about continental uh, or land volcanoes if they are going to form uh, a, a region which is under too much pressure if the magma is not able to move as freely of course it will put more and more pressure and then more dramatic eruptions will happen that is not the case with oceanic volcanoes so because of the reason that more easier ways are uh, provided to the magma in oceanic plates they are less prone, prone to clog the volcanic vents and then they can easily flow okay so that is why uh, it's less dramatic in nature so how do scientists actually measure when a volcano is about to erupt with the help of gps first it's very different from the kind of gps we use scientists can detect minuscule movements of a few centimeter just for a few centimeter on volcanoes any upward movement on the surface detected by gps indicates that something is pushing it from underneath second is so through telemeters if there is a change in the tilt of the volcano slope the volcano slope it can also indicate that some kind of breathing is happening and tilting is going on when we are going to talk about volcanoes of course we have to take into account the seismographs through a large network of seismometers which are present uh, in hawaii the tremors came from uh, the current eruption the scientists could see that the tremor, tremors came from very shallow depths so it indicated that there was an eruption in the making and it made it possible for the scientists and the government to declare that there is danger near it so it allowed the scientists to warn the government and the people chemical analysis of gases which comes through fumaroles uh, through vents and cracks and holes it also plays a huge part in uh you know predicting a volcano eruption there are certain hazards with respect to the current eruption because the mauna loa is spewing sulfur dioxide with other gases as well and when they combine with vapor oxygen and dust and the sunlight they produce smog or fog because of fog it can create headaches sore throats burning eyes and healthy person and if somebody is sick they can even be hospitalized so the uh, people there are limiting their outdoor activities and they are because uh, it's important for them to stay inside right now pele which is the glass particle these are also created with hot lava when hot lava erupts from fissure and immediately cools this can also pierce the skin so that's all that we have to talk for today i will attach the question in the comment segment related to today's segment you have to answer that okay so that's it thank you so much for watching and stay updated mm -hmm.